Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? I'm recording from the vehicle. Got appointments to go to today. Looks like it's going to be most of the day. So we had to get up early and jump in the car and take off right away. So I'm filming from the car again. This morning, we're going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians 15, 48. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Uh, do you guys remember what I mentioned to you yesterday about that mental image that I had about the statue of Jesus and, and the head started you know, 2,000 years ago when the body was assembled the way down to our time and that the, the, the heel, the bruised heel, that's our generation. Um, this morning I was telling my wife about that and it dawned on me that Nebuchadnezzar had a similar dream. You know, he had that dream of gold, the gold head, and then each body part had was made out of different materials and the head of gold represented his kingdom. When you get down to the feet of iron and clay, that represented the later kingdoms. It represents our time. And uh, it dawned on me that that's exactly what that picture is for that, that about you will crush Satan, you know, the serpent's head, but he will bruise your heel. That's exactly what that's referring to. And that heel is our generation um, coming in last, you know, uh, and Satan's doing his damage. And you can look at the church today as, as it is and see that being being the case so i just that just really stood out to me and just hit me all of a sudden and i could i could see this image and that verse kept repeating in my head and i'm like what is this referring to and then it dawned on me that's what that's referring to oh, okay that makes sense all right let's get into our verse this morning verse 48 as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust and as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. So let's go up here, find out what he's talking about. We'll start here in verse 41. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. Do you ever want to see an example of this? Look at the Pleiades through a telescope. And then look at um, Orion's belt through the telescope. Very different in how they look. The Pleiades are almost blue, a, a shiny white blue color. Whereas the stars in Orion's belt are the normal color you see most stars. So also is the resurrection of the dead. So he's giving us an example of what's coming. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Right now we live in the natural body. When the resurrection happens, and it, start, it all starts at the rapture of the church, there's going to be a massive resurrection of, of believers. There's going to be a spiritual body. So he's telling us how, how it's all going to play out and that there are different glories for different things. And so we're not all going to have the same um, position. There's multiple positions for who will stand in heaven and, and where they will stand. Verse 45, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. We start here at this, but move on to something better. Now this I say, verse 50, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now there's something interesting about that verse 50, the, the kingdom of God. He talks about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. You know those two different things. It's two different places. Kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are two different locale, locales. So we can't inherit one or the other without this change that we have to go through. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, 
but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Here he goes into the rapture at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The head and members are of one nature, and not like that monstrous image which Nebuchadnezzar saw. How funny. I didn't, guys, I did not read this ahead. How funny he mentions the exact thing that I came to an epiphany about this morning, talking with my wife. I, I kid you not, I did not read ahead. How funny he's talking about that exact thing. The head and members are of one nature, and not like that monstrous image which Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. The head was, was of fine gold, but the belly and thighs were of brass, the legs of iron and the feet, part of iron and part of clay. Christ's mystical body is no absurd combination of opposites. The members were mortal, and therefore Jesus died. The glorified head is immortal, and therefore the body is immortal too, for thus the record stands, because I live, ye shall live also as is our loving head, such is the body, and every member in particular. A chosen head and chosen members, an accepted head and accepted members, a living head and living members. If the head be pure gold, all the parts of the body are of pure gold also. Thus is there a double union of nature as a bias for the closest communion. Pause here, devout reader, and see if thou canst without ecstatic amazement contemplate the infinite condescension of the Son of God in thus exalting thy wretchedness into blessed union with his glory. And it is a glorious thing. It is a miracle of miracles that he will take us who are condemned, who are natural in nature, who are of the dust, who are nothing and makes us to be glorified with him. He takes our destination and changes it to a different one. He takes our status and changes it to a different one. He takes our state and changes it to a different one. Thou art so mean that in remembrance of thy mortality, thou mayest say to corruption, thou art my father, and to the worm, thou art my sister. And yet in Christ thou art so honored that thou canst say to the almighty Abba Father, and to the incarnate God, thou art my brother and my husband. Surely, if relationships to ancient and noble families make men think highly of themselves, we have whereof to glory over the heads of them all. If anyone else thinks because they are of royal lineage, I'm, I'm not. And I, I don't say this because of pride. I did my research, looked into my family history. I'm descended from a royal line of uh, Poles from Poland. Um, I'm related to a minor prince from Poland. They had to flee when they were about to be occupied and because they were trying to kill all the nobility and they had to change their name. I did, did research, tracked it all down and and found it out. I don't, the guys, I don't remember what the exact guy's name was. It's kind of been lost to history. But my last name isn't the, the full correct spelling of what it originally was. And I found out that there's several others that are similar that I'm related to. We're all part of the same family, but it was different princes from different uh, uh, lines uh, of the same royal family. I can't brag about that because it doesn't mean anything. It's irrelevant. Who cares? It has happened hundreds, a couple hundred years ago. Who cares? Here's something even more interesting is that no matter who we're related to here, we are now through faith related to Jesus Christ. We can boast about that. We can boast about how he is saving us and is going to make us a part of his family. Sons and daughters to the living God. Brother to Christ Almighty. The co-heir of all things. We can, we can boast of that because it's something the Lord is doing. I can't boast in me, but I can boast in him. I can't boast in what my genetic history or my uh, family history is. I'm related to Robert E. Lee. I'm related to Ulysses S. Grant, one by marriage, one by blood. 
a, there's a bunch of Cherokee Indian uh, tribes I'm connected to. Uh, I'm also connected to the Delaware tribes, Algonquins over on the East Coast who met Columbus. I mean, you want to sit down and you want to brag about who we who we are as individuals, we can boast in nothing. I can't boast in any of that. None of that matters. What I am in Christ does. What we are in Christ matters beyond all things. Let the poorest and most despised believer lay hold upon this privilege, and it is a privilege. Let not a senseless indolence make him negligent to trace his pedigree. And let him suffer no foolish attachment to present vanities to occupy his thoughts to the exclusion of this glorious, this heavenly honor of union with Christ. As much as I've sat down and traced my own personal family history to see where I come from, who I am, I'm, I'm very closely connected to um, Poland in my, on my dad's side because his grandfather was actually a baby when they came over from Poland. And so we're very close to that to that time. Um, same with uh, the, I'm related to grandmother half in Oklahoma, who's the head of the of the Cherokee tribes uh, from a distant relation. Uh, as much as I've done research into my own lineage and my own family tree and and who I'm connected to here, how much more should I go and look and see what my connection is to the Lord? And I've done that. I ask the Lord, Lord, am I yours? Am I saved? I need to know so that when I speak to others, I speak with confidence and boldness. That I, I know what I'm doing and who I am in you. That way I can glorify him more. That way I can boast about these things more. That way I can speak with a, a level of authority on these scriptures. Not that I know anything about them, but that I know who I am in them and because of them. And we all have that. Every one of us has it. Not for pride. Not, not for 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 proud boasting and for high-mindedness and sitting up on a high horse because of who we are. No, all the more reason to be humbled that the Lord would pick us to be a part of his family. All the more reason to be subdued by the wonderful privilege and the wonderful gift that he has given us this day. And that's why we thank every morning, at least, we thank him for this gift he's given us, at least in these videos. My, my prayers, the way I do them in the, in, the, in the videos, are structured that way on purpose. Because what good is it for us to have the gift if we don't acknowledge who gave it to us? I am a child of the living God. I am of the ultimate royal line. You are too if you are in faith in Jesus Christ. And that doesn't cause me to want to go out and brag. Hey, y'all better, better get out of my way. I'm a, I'm a child of the living God. Yet there are people that do that and call themselves Christians. We're not allowed to do that. We don't have that authority. We don't have that ability. What we do have is the ability to glorify him and to thank him for the wonderful blessing that he's given us. A peace that we can't possibly grasp. A, a, a gift we can't possibly comprehend. Many will try. But unless you have Christ, how can you know? Unless you have Christ, how can you understand? Unless you have Christ, how can you believe? It all starts with him and it all ends with him. One of the things I, I really enjoy in, in what I'm doing here is seeing the, the stark contrast between those who truly believe and those who are on the fence and those who actually don't. Because their response to the truth is for all three is different. Those who aren't really Christians respond very, very negatively and hatefully to the truth. The truth in the scriptures, read plainly and literally. Those who are on the fence have a hard time deciding how they want to respond. But when you show them truth, they're quick to react and take down a comment or retract a statement or something like that because they realize, oh, I made a mistake. And those that believe and are on Christ's side readily accept it and they love it and they just want more. They, they want to take in more. It's an uncontrollable, unnatural desire to want more of what the Lord has said, want more of what he's promised. And we look forward to that and we eagerly wait for that. There's a big contrast between real believers and those who are on the fence and those who are not believers. Big contrast. And yet, all want the title of Christian 
They want all the benefits, but they don't want all the requirements. They don't want all the things that go along with being a Christian. As soon as life starts, starts to get hard, they don't want to be a Christian anymore. As soon as uh, persecution comes, they don't want anything to do with it anymore. Stand and be counted. For the Lord has given us something incredible, and we will inherit all things because of him. The least we can do is be the Christians he's telling us to be. Be the Christians he is making us to be. Now, for many of us, that may look vastly different from one to, one to another. But it's all the same Lord. It's all the same Jesus Christ, and it's all the same destination. And we're all headed there in him and because of him. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. And to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. I thank you that basically I got a confirmation on what I was looking at with Nebuchadnezzar's image and with that image I had yesterday in my head of Christ as a statue and, and then who the heels are. And I, I find that so interesting that we see these pictures being spelled out in scripture, <clears throat> telling us things, helping us to understand things, encouraging us and strengthening us. The more we learn of your truth, the better we are able to walk and the more boldly we are in what we believe. We're not doubting or questioning when somebody calls, tries to call us out on it, but instead stand up and say, no, that's not what that is. It's, it's this because that's what the Bible says. And the people, people don't like it. People have a problem with it. You know, that's okay. They can have a problem with it. Lord, you've given us such a wonderful gift such a beautiful gift of salvation in you, of us being able to be attached to a royal lineage, a royal family. We are all royalty in you. But it doesn't make us go to a place of pride or go to a place of, of holding ourselves in a higher position than we should. It actually causes a great deal of humility in the real believers, the true believers, because we realize this, this wonderful gift, this staggering gift you've given us. This amazing blessing that you've given us. How can we possibly look away? How can we possibly doubt? How can we possibly question when you have made it so vibrantly clear? It's going to go your way. You have chosen who you have chosen. Like you said in the Old Testament, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will not have mercy on whom I will not have mercy. It is up to you. It's your will. Father, I thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have chosen us, that you have showed us mercy, that you've opened the door to us. Make us to learn more, be more of what you're making us to be, understand more about what you're doing and what this all means. Lord, for all that you have given me in these last five years, I pray you give everybody listening double so that they can see with their own eyes what I'm talking about and so that it registers, it makes sense and that they can grow too all according to your will. And for those that are outside of the faith, Lord, open their eyes that they can see that there's this wonderful free gift that they can receive. Simple, easy, nothing to it. And they can partake in this wonderful gift you've given us too. Your level of love that you are showing is beyond comprehension, beyond measurement. I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you that you have given us something we couldn't get here. Acceptance, love, perfect union. Not a strings attached union, but a perfect union. What a privilege it is to be called a child of God. And not just a privilege. The Bible says, your, your word says, it, it's a, you, you gave us the right to be called children of God. It's amazing. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. Very interesting of what just happened when I was talking about. I, I, I am not lying to you. I did not read ahead. It just dawned on me this morning, and then here, here it is. I, I'm, I'm going to take that as a confirmation, unless the Lord shows otherwise. But how interesting to, to know the truth to see things in the Bible and then to look at the world today, look at ourselves and each other and to see it playing out real time. Amazing. Hold on to faith. Hold on to truth. You know what it is. It's right here in front of you. Read the Bible. Trust it. Believe it. 
stand on that. The Lord will not let you become ashamed. And if people want to shame you or guilt you or attack you before what you believe, what the scripture says, don't worry about them. The Lord will take care of them. But don't let them cause you to stumble. Don't let them cause you to fall. Don't let them take away your crown. Jesus said, hang on to what you have. Let no one take your crown until I come. Well, he's on approach. This is it. You, you can't get any more specific fulfillment of prophecy than what you have today. It just doesn't get any better than that. Because it's literally being fulfilled. And there are a lot of naysayers out there. That's okay. I love y'all too. But you're wrong. Instead of listening to other people tell you what the Bible says, you need to read it for yourself. Because if you read it for yourself, we're all going to come to almost an identical conclusion. If we read the Bible ourselves, we will all come to almost identically the same conclusion. There is no way somebody is reading the same scriptures I'm reading and gets a completely 180 degree different view of what's being said. No way. People are being taught this. And so what we have to do is show them a little bit of patience and see if we can't help them maybe cross over, maybe come to a place of peace, come into that wonderful place of peace that defies all understanding and so they will stand with us in truth as we wait for the Lord I love you all very much I bless you all in Jesus name and I'll see you in the next video